Defence Minister Khwaja Asif announced that the Federal Cabinet has approved the National Energy Efficiency and Conservation Plan, a policy aimed at saving energy, under which the timings of markets and wedding halls have been curtailed. Briefing the media after a meeting of the Federal Cabinet today, Asif said that the timings of the wedding halls and markets across the country will be limited by 10 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. respectively. ملک میں بھر میں موجود تمام شادی ہال جو ہیں دس بجے جو ہے وہ بند ہو جائیں گے ان شاء اللہ مارکیٹیں جو ہیں وہ ساڑھے آٹھ بجے جو ہیں وہ بند ہو جائیں گی یہ آٹھ بجے پہلے تھا ہماری تاجر حضرات سے جو ہے گفتگو ہوئی وہ سارے انہوں نے مہربانی کی ایک بڑی ڈیلیگیشن سارے پاکستان سے یہاں پہ آئی پرائم منسٹر سیکریٹریٹ میں ان سے ملاقات ہوئی تو ان میں بعض نے نو کہا بعض نے ساڑھے آٹھ کہا بعض نے ساڑھے نو کہا بہرحال ہم نے آٹھ سے اس کو ساڑھے آٹھ کر دی آصف سیڈ کہ دی پروڈکشن آف فینز رن آن الیکٹرسٹی ویل بی ہالٹڈ بائی جولائی ایز ان ڈیفیشنٹ فینز یوز اراؤنڈ ون ٹوینٹی ٹو ون تھرٹی واٹس آف الیکٹرسٹی adding that import duty on inefficient fans will be increased. Moreover, he revealed after 1st February 2023, incandescent bulbs would not be manufactured and additional taxes will be imposed on the ones that were imported, saving the nation 22 billion rupees. The defense minister went on to say that the government has decided to make use of conical geysers mandatory within a year as they consume less gas, saving the nation 92 billion rupees. Asif also said that the government had decided to use street lights alternatively, which he claimed would save 4 billion rupees. Furthermore, he said that Pakistan consumes oil worth 3 billion dollars, and so the government would be introducing electric motorcycles this year. Khwaja Asif said the energy conservation plan will change the overall lifestyle and habit pattern of the nation, saving 60 billion rupees. The Supreme Court allowed the Election Commission of Pakistan to continue its proceedings against former Premier Imran Khan and his party leaders Asad Umar and Fawad Chaudhry in cases related to the contempt of the electoral body. The orders were passed by a three-member Supreme Court bench headed by Chief Justice Umar Atta Bandial and comprising Justice Atar Minallah and Justice Aisha A. Malik. The seven-page document said the proceedings initiated by the electoral body under Section 10 of the Election Act 2017 against the respondents have been allowed to continue. However, the Supreme Court restrained the ECP from passing final orders under the said section. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif appointed Maryam Nawaz as the senior vice president of the PMLN, authorizing her to reorganize the party at all functional levels, according to a notification issued by PM Shabazz, the party president. In a tweet, the Prime Minister said that Maryam possessed the drive, determination and experience to lead the party's organizational matters. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Isaac Thar congratulated Maryam on her appointment and wished her the best. At least six Karachi residents were confirmed to be infected by the XBB and XBB1 Omicron variants of COVID-19, the health department reported. According to the details, the sequencing was done by Aha Khan Hospital. The health department also revealed that the confirmed cases had been detected in residents of Defence Housing Authority, Shadman Homes and Tariq Road. A notification circulated by the department on December 28, 2022, also maintained that the variant of the Omicron virus detected in patients in the metropolis had no linkage with recently detected China variant BF.7. It added that none of the eight patients had a travel history of China. Earlier today, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif said that the COVID-19 situation in the country was under control, but instructed authorities to remain prepared to tackle any positive spread of the virus. Israel's new far-right national security minister, Itamar Ben-Gvir, briefly visited Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in Jerusalem, a site also revered by Jews, prompting fierce condemnation from the Palestinians and several Arab countries. Video footage showed him strolling at the periphery of the compound, surrounded by heavy security detail and flanked by a fellow Orthodox Jew. Although the visit passed without incident, it risks stoking tensions with the Palestinians that have already been running high after an upsurge in violence in the occupied West Bank in the past year. Ben Gvir took to Twitter and said the Temple Mount is open to all, using the Jewish name for the site. 
Opener Imamul Haq anchored Pakistan with a pugnacious half century as the home team reached 154 for 3 at the close of play after New Zealand piled up a handy 449 in the first innings of the second test in Karachi. At the close of day 2, Imamul Haq was unbeaten on 74 and South Shakil 13 as the home team needed another 96 runs to avoid the follow on. Pakistan started chaotically, losing opener Abdullah Shafiq for 19, Shan Masood for 20 and skipper Babar Azam for 24, before the Imam Shakil stand added 55 runs for the unbroken fourth wicket. In contrast, New Zealand's tail wagged furiously, with Matt Henry remaining 68 not out and Ijaz Patel making 35, both scoring test bests as they added an invaluable 104 runs for the last wicket. The two-match series is tied after the first test, also in Karachi, ended in a draw.